morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's Facebook AMS Live call. Today is June 27th, and I'm going to start us off with our leaderboards for the week. So here are IULs issue paid uh, for week 25. We have Brigado G with 1,920, Christopher D with 362, Gregory M with two here, one for 2,672, and one for 1,254. Ian H with 1,281, Isaiah T with 1,015, Jeanette M with 833, John B with 536, Naeem W with 3,228, Nichelle A with 479, Paul M with 2,198. And then for annuities issue paid, this is June 13th through June 19th. We have Stephen Y and Emery H with a split on 291,411. Frank E and Eileen D with a split on 252624 Reggie A with $247,007, Jonathan W with $196,507, Brandon L with $148,910, Danielle B with $125,538, Edward W with $100,000, Edford B with $82,666, Danielle B again with $72,420, Wayne C with $70,339, Jack Y with $70,000, Raymond D with $70,000, Michael B with $67,000, 167, Michael S with 65,931, Jeffrey E with 65,649, Jerome D with 64,716, Bradley R with 60,222, Dan G with 55,031, Jeffrey E with 47,450, Paul M with 39,780, Silvana P with 36,958, Lord S V with 35,199, Tina B with 25,000, Cornell A with 22,111, Daniel M with 21,193, Daryl B with 19,580, Marcus C with 15,345, and Todd S with $10,000. That brings our weekly total to just below $2.4 million for the week. Another great week, you guys. Uh, great job. Um, next up, we have um, just reminder on Sean's travel dates. He, again, will be at these summer conferences uh, training on the consumer home new uh, consumer in-home slides to sell more annuities. So he'll be presenting those. Make sure you're there. And if you need copies, of course, email us after his presentation. So July 8th, he'll be in San Antonio, Texas. July 25th, um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. August 1st, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, August 5th, Denver, Colorado. And August 26th, wrapping out the uh, summer conferences in Austin, Texas. That's all I have for this week, you guys. Uh, take care and we'll see you next time. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the AMS Live. Uh, our guest today is Andrew Taylor. Andrew, you are uh, a board member with Family First Life. You've risen up the ranks very, very quickly. Uh, and here recently, uh, we've seen the fastest growth in what we call the advanced markets, the annuities and the IULs from your team, and not only from the ground up, from, from new agents writing annuities, writing IULs, uh, but a lot of managers that are taking hold of that and training people. So I want to interview you today and and say, ask, you know, how you're doing that. How are you infiltrating those ranks and building a culture where they, the new agents and the managers are really taking hold of the advanced markets and riding it? Because I know as a company, we do a great job with the cornerstone, with the mortgage protection and the final expense. We need to, uh, we might need a little assistance, maybe some tips and tricks on how you're building that culture in the advanced markets to find success there. So please share with us a little bit about how that's working with you. Yeah, you got it, man. Thanks for having me on. I uh, appreciate everything. When I came to Family First Life, I was just selling final expense and mortgage protection. And through the advanced market sales that you put together, I, I was able to start, move, I moved a couple million dollar cases, which I never thought a million dollars to me was insane, mm -hmm. uh, but just, slowly learning over time, plugging into the training every single week. And I think that might be one of the biggest things that's the, the, the most simple is 
putting this on your calendar where it's a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. And I never go, I'm going to watch it later. I always watch it live. Because if I say I'm going to watch it later, it's like me saying I'm going to go to the gym later, which yeah. <laughs> never happens. Good now. So no, no matter what, I always um, I make sure to put that in my schedule. That's one of the core things along with the next the next level live. Um, and I listen to all the podcasts that come out with FFL every morning in the gym. And I, I really stay on top of learning stuff. And what's even crazier is I could have forgot. I've forgotten a lot of things that I've recently heard on the advanced market sales. And I'm like, whoa, I forgot how good that was. Mm-hmm. And then I can re I can reapply it and go, you know what? That really works. I stopped doing that. Why did I get away from it? So you're not only going to learn things, but you're going to relearn things. When you relearn things, I think it's a little bit more powerful because it's the third or fourth time you're hearing it and then you can apply it. Mm-hmm. So that that's that's exciting. Uh, the second thing would be the, the comp schedule. We have shown Family First Life's new comp grid and it has attracted producers that write annuities and have current clients. And really what it did is it kind of did what Family First Life did with the life model, which was pay everybody more. And yeah. now we can go, hey, look at look how high you could go with Family First Life on the um, annuity side. And we've gotten some big producers. Actually, there's a couple of them that have submitted over a million dollars within a, the first few weeks. And, you know, David Allen, he submitted how much now? Five million dollars. Yeah. And he yeah. was attracted to family first life as a whole, but also making more money for his efforts when it comes to writing annuities. So we've been able to do that. Um, The third thing is for new agents, let's say, you know, nothing about final, you know, nothing about annuities and it just seems like it's going over your head. You know, nothing about IULs. It seems like it's just going over your head. That's okay. And all we want you to do is ask the simple question in the home. So this is our protocol here. If I'm a new agent and I'm in the home, I'm going to ask the magic question, which is, Sean, do you have anything that acts like life insurance that can help pay off your home or go to your family if you die? Mm -hmm. Very Mm -hmm. non-threatening. They go, and if they kind of go, well, I'm not sure. I go like 401k, stocks, bonds, CDs, anything. What do you have that could act like life insurance and go to your family if you die? And they go, well, I got a 401k here. I have this here, I have this here, and I they identify the money. Okay. Yeah. Now that new agent, all they all they have to do is go, hey, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna come back and review the life policy I gave you next week on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And I'm gonna bring some illustrations on retirement plans where you can never lose any money. That's all the new agent needs to know. And they're going to the house to review the life plan. They're just bringing this information with them. Now, I could go back to the house for any reason. I could go back to, I could go, hey, I'm going to need to go over your anything just to get back in the house, just to present this additional option. Now, what changed for us really was um, the encouragement of new agents asking for help and giving a 10% commission split to an advanced agent to help them. Right. So what we applied on our team is we, we assigned someone who would take it really seriously, Albert Lau. We go, Albert, um, you're going to, we want you to help these new agents run illustrations, help them in the home. We want you to uh, follow up, help transfer the funds. And these new agents, actually, I was just watching uh, the NBA finals and they, they were saying when Durant came back into the game, after being hurt, everyone seemed to be playing more confident. And the analogy was you feel a lot safer walking through a dark alley with your big brother, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Albert's like the big brother of guiding them through this process of running the illustration, preparing for the appointment and then going into the home and uh, they go in the home. And I was just with an agent today. He goes, dude, that was so easy. I was so intimidated by annuities, but I was able to get help and give a 10% commission split and it worked like a charm. Now it doesn't, you can do it with any good agent. Yeah. You can go, Hey, will you do this for me and help me? And you know, you get something out of it and I get something 
otherwise could have been nothing because I don't know what I'm doing. Right. So we've 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 had a healthy uh, understanding of that process of people helping each other. I think that's made a huge difference, and um, and it and it's given people the ability to not. You don't have to know right away. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. identify money, and now once you go through this ten, fifteen times, you're going to know it because you've actually done it. Right. And so that's and been, help that, other people. That's been, yeah, that's been big for us. You know, you mentioned a couple of things, and and one thing I'm excited about, and this is um, kind of a mid July uh, expectation, just gathering all the, uh, um, the 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 organization part of it. Um, but we've had such success hiring people and uh, retaining good agents, replicating that FFL idea that we can pay the highest comp on the sales side that there's going to be now an addition to that on the manager side. So now these board members, VPs, everybody, I think, you know, is going to be very excited about that and they can replicate that. But that's not to say that you don't do commission splits anymore, because I think that's right. a very important thing, right? Uh, it's it's in this industry, it's very common. Life insurance policies, IULs, uh, you know, I, I've queried some people. I've queried the Nate Gerkings and the Jay Rosencrantz say, how often do you see splits? They say it's very common, right? Because they need help and you might need assistance four or five, six times and then you're up and running and that's the best way to do it. So regardless of the overrides commission levels, you could have someone over here who's helping this person over there. You know, you get that split right there. Everybody's happy and everybody's motivated as well as the, the hierarchies. Um, one of the things you said that, and I'm laughing because it's true, um, I always say the toughest part, and I've been I've been working out religiously since I was in sixth grade. I, I, that's just part of our culture where I grew up, playing a lot of football. We can and tell. I say the hardest part, yeah, go <laughs> It's one of the things I've done okay with, you know, uh, that, and uh, I think I'm a pretty good dad, right? Um, the hardest part is getting in the gym, right? I might have a crappy workout, like like I feel like I'm, you know, not there, not really working real hard, not. You, Getting in the gym is the hardest part. That's a great analogy because the second you allow yourself to say, I'm going to push that later, well, later comes the fatigue of the day. Later comes the uh, canceled appointment. You're feeling down and it, you've got to have that structure. And one of the things that I recognize, because everybody shows up on Facebook, who's watching when they're watching. Um, and I'm not, I'm not naming names, but this is, we're all adults, right? I, I, I see people who aren't there and guess what? Their team's not on. And guess what? They aren't having annuity production or they show up 22 minutes into it. And I, I get it. Right. I get it. But guess what their agents do? Your agents will do what you do. You know, we require the staff here. We require our agents. I know Matt Smith is religious about it. You look Matt Smith on early and guess what? So is Tiffany. So is Briggs. So is, and who writes the most annuities as far as a VP or, or a board member? The Northwest does. And uh, you all are you all are getting grand. You guys are doing a great job. And you'll see that leadership. I see Albert on there. I see comments. I see those sorts of things. And, you know, that's a fundamental that will never change no matter what you're doing in life. And I, I really appreciate that because it's good to to um, uh, to uh, uh, reiterate that. Last thing I want to touch on that you said is, you know, help in the home. We're reaching a saturation point. You know me, I'll work doggedly to help people in the home. But we're, we're, we're at a point where I can't help everyone. So identifying agents in your downline, in your agency, who are who are good at writing annuities, who can help, and encouraging them, having agents say, hey, you know what, Albert can help you, or Jody can help you, or Steve, or Susan, or whomever it is, and encourage the split. Sometimes the split might be 5%, might be 10%, might be 50-50 if they're sitting there hand and holding the person and, and, and in the home. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's important because if we build that culture of lean on each other, um, you're going to help, uh, you know, hone, right, sharpen the people who are good at it. And they're going to be $10 million black level producers. And you're going to help the people who had the didn't have the confidence early on to get their first two or three uh, annuities knocked out and everyone benefits from it. So, yeah. Anyway. One thing I want to add real quick, uh, it's important to it's important if you're going to do a split with anybody to uh, to discuss it up front. Mm -hmm. uh, we've mm -hmm. had some agents where they kind of don't talk about it and then they're confused on what the split should have been. And so on both parts, if you're asking some someone from help, 
for help, it should be addressed. And if you're helping somebody, it should be addressed up front. And there's nothing wrong with it because we're, you're getting compensated for helping somebody and that's fine. And the other person's getting compensated, you know, based off of your help. Um, it's just important to do it up front so there's no confusion after. So I just like to encourage that with everybody. Make sure point. you talk about it up front. That's a good point. And Andrew, if, if you're a VP, if you're a manager, have the courage of communication and uh, help out with that. That's part of your job. So, uh, Andrew, you're a new agent and you come to me, right? Um, maybe uh, maybe the AMS crew says, hey, ask your board member, ask your VP just because we're saturated, don't want to help you. And you know there's someone that can help you. And so I'm you and I say, hey, uh, Andrew, absolutely. I'm going to have Albert reach out to you and help you. OK, he's going to walk you through it. He's going to screen share. He's going to show you the illustrations. He's going to prepare you for that in home. He's going to really handhold you through this process. Um, but just to let you know, we need to make sure Albert is compensated because he doesn't have any override on you because uh, he might be in a different part of the team. He might not be uh, a member of that hierarchy, even if we have levels exactly. there. And as a manager, as a VP, you take that 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 out of them. Don't just blindly send someone and maybe give them a false representation that this is free help set the expectation and we're doing that because it's fair and you make a great point you know, all these are great points but that might be one of the best ones is that you need to communicate that up front because we don't want to have one where and we've seen it we actually see a lot of people proactively say who do i share this with and what's funny is i'll get one like i think of um uh well you know i, I guess zach i'm thinking of where I had helped him and he's like, he wrote me in on it. And I'm like, no, that's good. I, I, you know, I, I free help, but, but, uh, you know, I can only help so many people. That's cool though, dude. That's, yeah, that it is, is cool because that's the culture we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so great points. Andrew, appreciate you being on. Look forward to seeing you continue to grow. And uh, I'm here to be of service to you and your team. And I, I think the harmony we're creating and, and the momentum we're creating and the lives that we're changing, not only, and it sounds hokey, not only from the commissions that are being paid and the lives being changed that way, but think about it, right? We're in the longest bear run or bull run in history. At what point does it take a dip? And you look at the last year, I recently posted to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, the S&P 500, uh, I'll try to do it the way that everybody says, has gone like this for almost 10 years, right? Little, it, it, but if you carve out the last year, it's gone like that. Mm -hmm. That last year is probably a better representation of what the future holds than the last 10 years. So if we go out there, every single person you help out and you eliminate fees and you eliminate risk and you eliminate emotion, you're doing a good thing because when that next 2008 hit, when that next 2001 hits and the market collapses, you can feel really good about what you're doing and know that you earned that money. So, Andrew, thanks so much, man. Appreciate you as always. Make it a great week. Take care. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the classroom session of the AMS Live by Family First Life. Today, we're going to talk about the Index Universal Life, uh, the IUL, as we, as we know it. Uh, this is a big push for the advanced market sales team because it's something that is underused. So I thought going through the products, going through the solutions that the, um, the IUL provides, um, I thought of the idea of a Swiss Army knife, okay? And I think we need to do a better job of understanding the IUL, but also presenting it in this way. Uh, if you'd like a copy of these slides, you can email annuity at familyfirstlife.com. We'll also have it uploaded to fflams.com. So let's go through this very powerful presentation on uh, the Swiss Army knife of financial products. And that's really the way to describe it, the Swiss Army knife of financial products. Don't uh, relegate it to just being an insurance product. It is an insurance product and it is an insurance product first, but it is a financial product. It's there to um, do many things for people throughout their lifetime. Now here's the deal. When I was born, when I was uh, 12, when I was 18, when I was 25, I did not know exactly what the future held, but I knew I would have some options. So having a product that has options, just like the Swiss Army knife has options, is very, very important, very, very powerful. Let's go through those options. So as you can see here, we've got the Swiss Army knife. This is going to be demonstrated for uh, kind of an average, uh, slightly ideal candidate, but someone who is 25, we have him as a male here, uh, healthy, uh, married, has a newborn child, and is allocating $500 a month 
to the Index Universal Life. Now I want to talk about that for a second. $500 a month, okay? We treat this as a retirement account. I understand we get people in the home and we are almost afraid to raise that premium because we equivalent it to maybe a life benefit or excuse me, a death benefit on life insurance sale or um, you know, we don't want to make it too expensive, we want to make it affordable. But if I were to ask you how much do you want to pay for your life insurance coverage for that death benefit, you're going to say I want to pay the least amount possible. If I said how much do you want to save for retirement, you want to save the most amount possible. See, the reality is within an IUL, within an Index Universal Life, we suppress down to the defer limit the minimum amount of life insurance. So you really are paying the least amount possible, but we maximize the cash value. So sell these with adult premiums. Sell these and challenge your clients. Listen, at 50 bucks a month, you're not going anywhere in retirement. You're not going to have options. You're going to have to work till you're 75 years old. I'm not trying to be demeaning. I'm telling you the truth. So let's put in a real amount. Let's go through your budget and see what can you save. A lot of people don't have 401ks or they're no longer being matched. And heck, even if they do, our taxes are going to be higher now when your write-offs, your children credits, your mortgage interest rate is deductible, or are they going to be higher later in the future, right? So let's talk about this gentleman who is putting in $500 a month. And maybe it's $250, maybe it's $500, maybe it's $1,000, but start programming yourself and start with your own policy. What are you doing for retirement as a life insurance agent, as an annuity agent, to set aside money for your retirement? And how are you going to take care of all these life events? Because we don't know exactly which ones and in which order they're going to take place. So let's go through each of them. Let's start with college planning, okay? Newborn child, the baby's zero, all right? Bridget has a new baby girl, Quinn. Quinn is born. What can we do to help prepare Quinn for college? So let's look at this. If at, at uh, age of birth they start putting $500 a month, then that is $6,000 a year of premium outlay. The child turns 18, is graduating high school, and now is going to college. The, the parent has set aside $25,000 a year to pay for college. Now will college cost $25,000? We don't know. We can do some guesstimates. Do we know which college Quinn is going to go to, right? We don't. We don't even know if she is going to go to college. And see, unlike other plans that are specifically for college, and they're good plans, a, a 529, a Cloverdale plan, um, we have more options. If the child never goes to college, then you simply don't take the money out, no problem. Okay, that's some flexibility that you have. And with college planning, this is something that is taught in the CFP designation, college planning is different for everyone. So slow down a little bit. Before we start throwing numbers at people, and here's how we can handle college planning, talk to them. Do you see your daughter going to college? Is that priority for you, something you really want to help them with? Did you go to college, Mr. or Mrs. Client? Did your parents or anyone else help with college and what did that look like? See, that can change for everyone. There's people who maybe just had to get a college scholarship through athletics or they weren't going to college. And there's some people who their parents or grandparents helped them pay for college, whether it was all of it or maybe half of it. So I think $25,000 is a starting point, but this would be after some conversation with the importance of college, the determination to get them go, and what that would look like and understand they have some flexibility. Now, a couple things that are important this is critical when we're trying to sell this and help someone out with their college planning. Did you know that the assets within an index universal life policy are not counted towards federal calculations for your grants? And that's where most of your, um, uh, your scholarship money comes from, like a Pell Grant, things like that. The IUL cash value is not counted. So if, if this is the money you've saved up, and this is a fairly significant amount, we're talking about $200,000, you might not qualify if that was in a traditional account, or if it was in a Cloverdale account, or a, a, a cafeteria fund. But in an IUL, that money isn't there according to the calculations when you submit for those scholarships. How beneficial is that? The parent isn't going to be over the income amount, so then they can receive some, some uh, uh, college uh, uh, grants. Uh, the other thing is that the death benefit helps during the protection, or the death benefit helps protect during the accumulation process. Right? If I'm putting in two, three thousand dollars a year into some sort of college fund, whatever that might be, like a UTMA account or um, uh, a cafeteria plan or a Cloverdale, whatever it might be, 
If I die four years into it, whatever I've accumulated is what I've accumulated. I'm not saying they're bad plans. They have some really good benefits with those plans. But we sell IULs and we can sell this. This now has, look, three, four years into it, you're reaching half a million dollars of death benefit tax-free. You could pay for college for her and for all your kids, as well as offset some of the income loss that you would have. So college planning, that is the first facet or first tool of the Swiss Army knife of the IUL. The second one, home purchases, okay? Maybe a home purchase is in the future. Maybe they need help with that. Very simple calculation. All we're doing here is we're saying, say at maybe 36, they're starting to earn enough income, okay? Maybe it's not their starter home, but it's their second home or somewhere in between. At age 36, they take out $50,000 as a down payment on a home, nearly a $300,000 home. So there they are, they're homeowners. Now the interest that they pay for that home mortgage is tax deductible. Now they're gaining um, uh, appreciation in the home value. Now they have some place that they can plant their roots and, 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 and grow uh, economically speaking, but also as a family and as a functioning family. Okay, so let's go back here and let's look at, sorry, retirement. Retirement is the one that we think of a lot, okay? Whether it's supplementing your existing retirement with an IUL, or if it is the only retirement you have, there's some huge advantages to a retirement plan through an index universal life. So in this scenario here, the last year that they pay $6,000 is at age 66. It is 41 years into the policy. They then retire, and immediately they're taking out a hundred and 65, almost $166,000 a year. See, that's probably more than they made during most of their career. And again, that money is what? It is tax-free. It is what they call non-reportable income. It's technically done through loans from the policy. So non-reportable income, that means that the IRS doesn't even get a report that this money is being transferred from the insurance company to you. And this money will last them for the rest of their life. Okay, so at age 85, which is probably average age of death on today's mortality statistics, they have taken in $3.15 million tax-free. Do you know you would have to earn about $5 million in order to take $3.15 million home? That's an incredible amount. Just based off $500 a month set aside early. So they put in little less than a quarter million, they take out 3.15 million tax-free. And look over here, we still have one and a half million dollars of tax, uh, tax-free death benefit remaining with over a million accessible as cash. Think of the va valuable things you can do with that. Let's go a step further. If we, if we have a 25-year-old male who's very healthy, why wouldn't they live longer? Let's take this to age 95. At 85, they still haven't paid any more premium because they were done paying at 66 when they retired. Now they've taken out, oh my goodness, $4.8 million. That's the equivalent of earning about $7 million in retirement. And they still have $2.285 million of tax-free death benefit, of which about $2 million is accessible as cash. So the Swiss Army Knife, the IUL, does a fantastic job for college planning, a fantastic job for home purchases, and a fantastic job for creating or supplementing retirement. Now, let's talk about businesses, okay? What if you want to start a business? And this is a very common thing, something that I'm coaching my boys, my girl about. Um, I enjoy being self-employed. However, I think there's a lot of value to spending some of your career, especially early in your career, working with a large company, working in corporate America, whatever your profession might be. This is just specific to my scenario. So sort of like the college planning, you have to have a conversation with them. Have a conversation with that 25-year-old. Say, do you plan on working with your current company forever? Or do you plan on staying self-employed forever? Or do you plan on being self-employed in a long time or funding a business maybe for your child? Talk to them about the experiences that they had. Talk to them about what their plans might be and how the IUL can come in handy. Again, what we're doing is we're accessing the cash value. So let's say they've had a career. They've worked a decade at ABC airplane manufacturer or 
XYZ paper company, whatever it is, now they feel like I want to do my own consulting company. I want to go break out and build something of value for myself, for my family, and for future generations. So at age 46, they decide they're going to start a company and they know it's going to need some capital. All right, well, right here, they can fund, uh, uh, shell out $50,000 a year easily with really not making a huge dent in what they have. Okay, if we look at that, we have the benefit of taking out the cash and being able to cover payroll, being able to cover travel expenses, being able to cover initial investments that are required to start a business. Everything from faxes and, and, and computer equipment, uh, uh, you name it, whatever the business might be. And how easy is it to just simply write a check from your IUL account versus going through something like um, fundraising with a venture capitalist firm or um, getting an angel investor and I'm thinking of things that I've experienced or how about an SBA loan? I've attempted to do those before. They're not easy and I'm not trying to defame SBA loans. If you're out there and you promote them, that's great. You probably know more than I do. I just know that the time that we attempted to do an SBA loan, it was not easy. Right here, they're just using their Swiss Army knife and saying, the future has, for me, create an opportunity to start a business and I have the means to do it because I have options within that retirement. And oh, by the way, how about this death benefit? You take out an SBA loan, you uh, uh, take money from an angel investor and you die, what happens to that business? There's no value. So it's going to go back to the investors, the debtors. In this case, you're the debtor. Not only that, you have a half million dollars of tax-free money. So you could pass this business on to your spouse, to your business partner, call it a key man policy, or to your children. See the flexibility that you have by funding a business through your IUL. Next, let's talk about estate planning. Estate plan, okay? That's what we think of a lot of times for life insurance. I like to quote Tom Hedman when he, when he talks about two things with estate planning. First thing he says is, you can only do two things with your money. You can spend it or you can give it away, right? You can't take it with you. And when I think of estate planning, I think of what do we want to do for those that we love? What is that going to look like? Well, by simply setting up $500 a month, we have all these options on that Swiss Army knife. But at the end of our life, if our priority tends to be um, moving towards a more altruistic phase of our life, and statistically speaking, they've done surveys to show that the older someone gets, especially if they've accumulated a little bit of wealth, and sometimes that wealth to them is $20,000. Sometimes it's $20 million. But they become more altruistic. They want to help. They want to give money away to charities. They want to give money away for grandchildren to colleges. They want to help people out. Well, estate planning is essentially doing that in the most tax efficient way. And like Tom Hegna says, the best way to pass on money is through life insurance. So let's look at this in its most simple form. 95, this young man dies. He's lived a great life. He puts in $246,000. He stopped paying 30 years prior, three decades prior. He's never made a payment for the last three decades. And look at the cash accumulation on that. And because it's an IUL, guess what? It is not subject to probate. And the money is passed in tax-free. So you avoid probate. You can split your beneficiaries any way you want. You could have 5% go here, 10% go here, 20% go to your children, 50% go to your spouse, 10% go to your church. Think of the difference that you could make through this sort of endowment. And like Tom Hegna says, I keep quoting him because it does a great job talking about how life insurance is the best way to pass money on. It's pennies on the dollar. Would you buy a stock if you had to pay $246,000 knowing that would pay back $16.5 million and not with long-term capital gains tax implications, but with no tax implications? This is something that might be hard to grasp when you're 25, but keep in mind, I'm just using one example. You can set up plans like this when they're 35, 45, in some cases even 55 if they can put enough premium into it and if they're fairly healthy. So going back to the Swiss Army knife, we've talked about college, we've talked about home purchasing, we've talked about retirement, we've talked about starting a business, funding a business, we've talked about our estate planning, now long-term care. 
And here's a cool thing with long-term care and how it's addressed with an IUL. You might have a combination of these things. You might pay for half of your child's college for the first two years, and then they get a scholarship. You might or might not start a business. You might or might not purchase a home, or maybe you only need $10,000 because you have the rest saved up. Okay? When we do this sort of stuff, we don't know exactly how it's going to play out. But knowing that we have the options of flexibility is what's huge. But let's say we have a scenario where we've used this money for retirement. Let's say we've not only used it for retirement, but we've funded our children's college. We took 10 or 20K out for a college loan. We gave some money away. The cool thing about it is when it comes to critical illness and chronic illness writers, which are built into most of these policies, these IUL policies we write, like Global Atlantic, Mutual of Omaha, even if you don't have any cash left, because everything I showed you previously talks about the flexibility of this tax-free cash access, you can borrow this against the death benefit. So talk about removing the burden from your loved ones. Making sure you don't have to go into your Roth IRA that you, that you have set up or these other assets you might have accumulated. You don't have to do a reverse mortgage and you don't have to suffer in some Medicaid facility with a shared room and uh, you know, limited care and, and, and the idea that the facility itself is not where you want to die. Can you imagine the depressing thought that I've worked my whole life to live my last couple days here? All right. With this, if you have the cash depleted, but you have access to the death benefit, the death benefit still is at three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, with the average cost in the future probably being somewhere around $100,000, and the average person spending about two years in a long-term care facility, you could have the best of care without imposing a burden on your family. And even better yet, unlike a long-term care policy, it's not a reimbursement. It's not go to the facility. You can have it paid directly to you. You can have in-home care. You can have family that takes care of you and they can get reimbursed. You have so much flexibility within the critical illness, chronic illness, end of life, long-term care phases. It makes it hugely, hugely valuable. Just like every other spectrum of the Swiss Army knife that I mentioned for the Index Universal Life Policy. So if you are not aware, we have a website for advanced market sales, part of the Family First Life um, uh, family of websites, okay, and resources, the FFLAMS.com. That's FFLAMS.com. What you need to do is you need to register. All right, you register with the, the, your, um, we use the Athene agent ID. If you're not contracted with Athene, we can use America, we can use Global Atlantic, um, we can use uh, Legacy uh, or even Guggenheim now. And the last four digits of the phone number that you use to register, once you have access, you'll be able to log in and you're going to see a plethora of training videos, okay? So I look at these training videos and I mention this because this is where you want to start. If you're not sure how to attack these IULs but you're excited about what you see here, nothing's learned instantaneously. It takes a few repetitions. So the first thing you need to do is go to the FFL AMS, gain access, and watch the IUL training videos. Under the training section, you're gonna see videos such as how to sell IULs versus 401Ks. You're gonna be able to download and see the IUL trifold, okay? Getting the most out of your insurance strip account, which will help you sell and gain access to people who want IULs, and a great video called IUL 101 where it goes into really good detail, hosted by Nate Gerkink, one of our platinum partners from Global Atlantic, he goes through and he goes in really good detail on the values and benefits of IULs and how to sell them using the illustrations. All these tools are here. And then what you need to do is email Kim. That's Kim at FFLAMS. Kim's our new director of IUL development for the advanced market sales team. And she will do a one-on-one -on -one with you, training you, helping you, getting you familiar with it. And you can submit your scenarios to Kim. You can submit your scenarios through FFLAMS. And what we'll do is we'll find the perfect fit, whether it's Protective, Global Atlantic, Mutual of Omaha, FNG, the list goes on. We have access to so many great FFL, or excuse me, uh, IUL carriers now at FFL, at Family First Life, that we can get you the best comp, we can get you the best product, and we can help train you and walk you through that scenario, even if this is new to you. So, hey everyone, 
jump on this. If you need access to this, it'll be at the FFLAMS or you can email annuity at Family First Life. This uh, Swiss Army Knife presentation is a fantastic presentation to give to clients. And they don't all have to be 25 year old healthy males. They have to be maybe 50 or under, somewhat healthy and have a, 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 a motivation, have a drive to prepare for retirement. So learn this, use it, and who's best to use it first? How about yourself? Because what are you doing for retirement? As agents, we're not normally paying a lot into Social Security. We're not having a 401k. We're not having a match. What are you going to do for retirement? Do you want to take care of your family? Of course you do. An IOL is a fantastic way to do that. So thank you, everyone. Hope you learned a lot. We'll talk to you later. Sean Ruggiero here, AMS Live. Um, thanks for joining us. Today we have a special guest. We have the president and founder of Family First Life, Sean Mike. Thanks for coming to beautiful Coeur d'Alene. The sun was shining for you. And uh, uh, sitting down with us here, I know that you've been meeting with the staff and, and having a couple off-site or uh, offshoot meetings on that. Uh, stuff that really helps the agents grow, help the agencies grow. Um, but I think it's good timing because one of the things we just initiated and wanted to talk to you about that pertains to advanced markets, annuity sales, is the relaunch. And this is proof that we're trying to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to make things work and put the agent first. Yeah. But the relaunch of the compensation model, which you're going to see, Joe will put it on the screen here, um, and our new carriers. So we're proud to announce that we now have a theme, which is still our platinum partner. And I don't know if we use that term still, mm -hmm. but the, the one we that do. we do, platinum yeah, partner, exactly. okay? Always been good, sponsoring us for conventions, been there with our support and you know, helping out around the nation. Um, but now Guggenheim, mm -hmm. top comp levels for that. Uh, Legacy, which their products, uh, underwritten by America, their products have become mm -hmm. so, so strong. Uh, and Global Atlantic, we now have the annuity side with top comp level over mm -hmm. there. Some really good accumulation products and some fantastic income products. So we have all four of these products. We have the new comp levels, which rewards agents, which is what we tried to accomplish the mm -hmm. first time. But now it rewards managers, board members, VPs, mm -hmm. people who can hire and build business because that's what it's about. So can you, could you expound on that a little bit? You know, what the thoughts were, what you shared with me in why we revisited that and why it fits the FFL model now versus before? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, first of all, I appreciate um, your time. appreciate being here. It is, it is beautiful. Um, that's not beautiful in Connecticut, but it's, it is outstanding <laughs> here. Um, you know, I think this is a testament to our ability to change. I think when we launched the company, it was pretty self explanatory Life side just seemed pretty simple. Like we had been in life before, mm -hmm. kind of knew what comps were, knew what we thought was fair and what we thought wasn't fair, and said, well, we don't want to replicate what wasn't fair. I was, I was kind of makes me laugh. People are like, I worked at X company and I didn't like it. And I'm like, then why'd you replicate it? <laughs> you went and replicated it again somewhere else. You know, we didn't. We said, all right, here's the life side. We're going to go ahead and pay people a lot more and do, you know, give them renewals and not charge them, you know, anything. And, and I think, we, first of all, annuities for us at the very beginning to me, to be honest with you, were they weren't an afterthought like they were an afterthought. You know, it was bread and butter, and then we got mm -hmm. this, and you guys started kicking butt, running with it, and we just kind of had the comp we had. We just really didn't dive too much into it, and then we had some people that did quite a bit. Like we didn't have top annuity producers when we started. Right. We had guys and girls that came over and said, "I write 30, 40 grand a month in life. Mm -hmm. Here I am." We're like, "Good, here's your comp," mm -hmm. because we understand that world. We didn't have a lot of top annuity producers because in our world, the independent market organization, middle America space, there aren't a lot of top annuity producers. Right. They kind of lived somewhere else. So we started cultivating organically our own and then they explode. So we have a conversation a while back and I said, we got some pretty darn good annuity producers that we're going to have to raise that comp a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, or quite a bit. So we do it. You know, you guys are great. We kind of configure something. And then in the midst of doing that, we kind of, Probably made some tweaks that we ended up fixing where we said, you know what, let's make sure we, we reward everybody. The guy or girl that's selling a lot in annuities, right. the manager, the agent, whomever on these certain levels that hired them and helped train them on, to some extent too. Because one of the things we're asking managers and VPs to do as well is, hey, this office, because this, this is where your advanced markets, annuities, IEWs, where it comes out of, mm -hmm. 
Um, you guys can only do so much on the training side. And if we're going to crank the comp up, that's what I said to you. Let's make sure on the annuity side and the life side, they match up as far as Family First Life's strategy, yeah. which they do. Yeah. And we did send the same thing on the MedSup side. That was my question to some people who have MedSup. Mm -hmm. Give me a 140. What's a 140 in MedSup? Yeah. Boom, 23. Got it. We'll have that. So and you guys have done an outstanding job, A, bring on the additional carriers. I'm always a big fan of, you know, we have platinum partners too, and it's great, but we want to make sure we have enough options for everybody. So I think when you look at, you know, what Joe put up on the screen, you'll see that it's the most aggressive plan out there, yeah. both for the producers and the manager. Because yeah. what I see outside of here, when they are aggressive with producer, there isn't these levels where you can make a spread and get paid. So now, we've I've thought since day one, this is the best company to work at if you're going to be a life insurance agent. Now I believe it's the best company if yep. you're an annuity agent. Yeah. And if you're both, that's outstanding. But on the annuity side, we've become so aggressive. And we did had to earn better comp too. We had to get ourselves yeah. up there to be able to give it back. Yeah. So that was part of it too. So we had to do it on the life side. So that's um, in summation, that's kind of how I feel about it. I think you'll, you you all will agree. Yeah, and, and you make a good point. There was a learning curve there. Annuities and the compensation, it's a little bit, I don't want to say hidden, or, or mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's, there's fewer IMOs out there, and the plans, they camouflage it a little bit more, whether it's mm -hmm. how they, 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 you know, a lot of um, LOA, and that means mm -hmm. they're just paid directly from the company. They're not paid from the By carrier. By the way, that's no good. Right. So if you're LOA, you need to quit. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> if I give you any advice from a guy, he's like, <laughs> he's like, I work with Guggenheim, but they don't pay me. And I'm like, yeah. What do you yeah. mean they don't pay you? It's like they pay this other guy. I'm like, you need whatever you do, go quit. Go work anywhere you want. Don't let somebody else take your money. Yeah, and and, and, and a lot of that has to do with the intention that, hey, we'll give you high comp, but we'll hide it. And mm -hmm. we're not going to give you right. high comp. We had to learn how that works. And there are some companies where you have to pay LOA, but mm -hmm. they're not we're disclosing the comp level. We're Correct. saying you're going to get paid. But when we 7%. have when we have the option. And let you get paid. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? Yeah, because there's there's one. It's better for the accounting, yeah. and two, uh, it gets the agent paid as fast as possible, which the annuities is not normally very and fast. And the agent does the majority of the work. They do. They yeah. receive the money. And if a company only pays LOA with everybody, it's like you know, if you take identity theft, which they well they pay as earned. It's the way it works. Med sub. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. If they didn't, we would be different. It's the way it works. So mm -hmm. we're going to be the best as far as the comp level goes. But but you're right. I think we had to navigate it. We had to learn it. And it yeah. was it yeah. was a learning curve. And and again, we had to earn it. Mm -hmm. It's just like right. a med sub. You, you can't just walk in the door. We had a lot of credibility life-wise. Yes. We sold quite a bit. A but the annuity point. aside, it was kind of like, well, what are you all going to do? Well, we're going to do... We were touting the CRM, insurance yeah. drip. Yeah we're, yeah, we're going to do this. We're getting ready to. Yeah, so... And, and I think that now that we have that, the first iteration, and, that, and it's proof that we're trying to come up with ideas to reward and make the annuity model fit... The same uh, mantra, if you will, of the, of the Family First Life model. Because let's not overcomplicate. You know why Family First Life hires a lot of people? It does have great training. It doesn't charge agents. It sticks behind the idea of paying them, putting them first, but also has highest comp. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. If you're selling Toyota Priuses and you got the lowest price, you're going to sell a lot of Toyota mm -hmm. Priuses. Not to simplify. There's a lot of value to Family First Life, but that is paramount, that compensation. Mm -hmm. So we rewarded the producers. You can get up to a seven and a half on your own pen for lifetime earnings. You only have to, you know, hit a certain amount in one year. Lifetime earnings. So I think of people like, um, you know, Linda Lampasso. I think of, of course, Matt Smith. They just keep knocking away at it, and all of a sudden they're at a seven and a half with extra right. benefits. But this, we have a new, lot of people heading there. A lot Matt of people, Boyd, yeah. yeah and Danielle exactly. and David. I mean, Wayne it's good. Carr. Yeah, Wayne I mean, Carr, you, could, yeah. you could go through the list, and that's exciting because that's that's letting them get paid because they're doing the work. That's right. They're buying the leads. They're in the home. They're taking time for the families. The stuff that you've always preached, and I believe it 100. percent But now we have it on the agency side. So if there's one thing I encourage vice presidents, board members, these people that are in a position where they're now shifted to hiring as their main goal, you have phenomenal comp. You can get up to eight and a half percent now. Mm -hmm. Up to eight and a half percent on the annuity side. That's more than many IMOs can get, mm -hmm. and that is the FFL mantra: the idea that we will, we will be, we will give the highest comp. You got to earn it. You got to. But that's right. you know, so using that comp to 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 hire. Um, last question I have for you: What does an agent need to do? So we get those ask a specialist. Bridget puts out the report every single week that you see, mm -hmm. and let's say there's thirty five of them a week, fifty a week. Way better than six or seven like we used to get before conference, right? We call it kind of that yep. that Vegas conference. Just things just exploded. True. Tom Heg, then he'll be back next year. Excited about that. Um, exploded. Ninety percent of them are brand new. So we've got a lot of brand new people that watch this call live, or they'll watch it later on. Mm -hmm. What's some advice you can give them? Obviously, 
the bread and butter like we talked about. But how do they turn that bread and butter into right in annuities? Yeah. It's a great question. I think that, I, first of all, every single client that we deal with, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the market we're in. I'm a big fan of the middle American market. Um, every one of them still has a, whether they're young enough where they're thinking about a retirement plan, you know, an IUL, or they're reached that place in their, in their life where they're trying to protect the retirement. Yeah. Now, if their retirement is they have 70 grand in a 401k, if their retirement is they have $2.7 million put away somewhere, it's still their retirement. Mm -hmm. And I think all you have to think about as a new producer, this is what hit me. It took me about a year and a half to figure this out, Sean. I was selling a bunch of life insurance, and I just, out of sight, out of mind. I just didn't talk about it. I just went out and made my sales, went out and made my sales. And I knocked on his door one day, and I couldn't, I just, I couldn't. Her medical situation was not good. Um, he had already gotten life insurance and just had some serious medical stuff happen. I was like, you got luck, you lucked out, you bought a bunch a year ago. This mm -hmm. happened. Um, and she, I start, just because I was frustrated, I asked about the retirement. And she had about 450 grand to 401k, I was losing money. All you have to do as an agent is figure out if your clients are savers or investors. That's it. Mm -hmm. The only question you got to ask them is, how you doing in retirement? What do you mean by retirement? I mean, you all have great training. I'm just saying, for a guy, a life insurance sales guy, who didn't know anything about anything, who just said, how's that working out for you? It's working out great. Okay, great. What do you mean by great? Is it, is it performing the way you want it to? Do you consider yourself a saver or investor? And I'm a, I'm a, I, I like gambling, you know? So, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an investor. Okay, so you're saying that everything you're putting in, you're willing to lose money. Yeah. Well, I don't want to lose money. Then you're a saver. Yeah, it, you have to. I think all you have to do as an agent, new, been around for a while, haven't sold any, is make sure you define that. And if you find something, all you have to do is get it back to somebody. Mm -hmm. That's what the ask a specialist is for. A lot of the VPs we got and board members understand it. Mm -hmm. All you say is, "Hey, listen. Okay, you got. Looks like you got a couple different accounts here that adds up two hundred ten thousand dollars. We have some annuity specialists in the office. I'm gonna go ahead and get this information. When I come back out and your life policies are are delivered, I'll come out and go over those with you." And let me show you what you're eligible for. I don't, yeah. I don't, I can't tell you all that right now because I need to take a look at this and I'm going to bring it back to somebody who knows a little bit more about me, more than I do. And I think people like that. <laughs> I think that it's one of those things where I think that anybody, when somebody asks for help, you seem to be more interested in listening to them because none of us know everything. You know, nobody likes to know it all, right? And it's so true. So, hey, I, I don't you know what, I do know what I'm doing. You know what I'm doing? I'm going to go back and find the best option for you. I could just immediately try to come to one, but I want to look at the whole picture, see what you're but look at all these companies you just talked about. Right. You know, I need to look at, you know, Athena. I need to look at Guggenheim. I need to look at Legacy. What state I need to look at Global Land. Yeah, exactly. Where are you at? Where's the money right now? Are there any tax yeah. ramifications? Yep, absolutely. What does that all mean? So I'm going to do all of my due diligence and then bring it back to you. Yeah. Sounds great. Got it. So I think as it's, there's no reason to be afraid to ask because I think, the thing I tell everybody that starts, you know, I was just saying this to a guy I like and it's a VP and, and I'm like, but when are you going to stop worrying about what everybody thinks? Mm -hmm. Because the only reason you wouldn't ask about the retirement is the fear of them judging you. Yeah. You're trying to help somebody. If they get mad because you try to help them, so be it. What do you want to do? At the end of the day, and the more you ask, the more somebody's going to go, nobody asked me. Yeah. Wow, I got, I got 300 grand over here. It went down by $27,000 last time. I can't stand that. I'm losing money. Yeah. You know, the market's bad. People panic. They don't want to lose their money because they want to get out of there. Market starts going good. Sometimes they think, man, I've kind of, I'm, I'm up this percentage. I know the market does this. That's what it does. I'd like to kind of capitalize on that, hold on to my gains, secure yeah. those. Yeah. I'd like to kind of move out now before it kind of does one of these deals. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with the election. I don't know what's going to happen with the trade. I don't know what's going to happen. So, And they watch TV too. Yeah. And it makes them nervous. I mean, TV's job is to scare the heck out of all of us. Yep. Don't watch it. I mean, it's, it's dangerous. So I think as a new agent, yeah, you know, people always say trust the system. And, it, and it's important. You have to trust the system. I think trust in the fact that if you're doing the right thing, nobody has the right to judge you. Ask. If you commit to asking 100% of your clients yeah. about their retirement, if you just commit to asking. You don't have to commit to close them off. You commit to asking 100% of them. Hey, by the way, my manager requires that I ask this. If you're uncomfortable when you start out, my manager, we do a lot of retirement protection. So my yeah, manager yeah. requires... Because they, I don't. They might call up facts. Hey, to ask about this, mm -hmm. my manager requires. <laughs> what are you doing for your retirement right now? Where's your money at? You don't need to give me all statements. I'm just curious what you're looking at, and are you happy with that? How's it performing for you? If mm -hmm. that person goes, I can lose it all, and I don't care at all, and I want to make big gains, and I'm willing to risk it all, they're not our client. Yeah, they're an investor. They're not our client. They're not a saver. It's not a fixed in index annuity kind of deal. So, um, you know, if if you ask, you know, you never get hurt. 
It's when you don't ask, and then somebody comes in two weeks later and asks and gets paid twenty four thousand dollars that you could have gotten yeah. paid yep. because they just asked and yep. they did the exact same thing, called up, and that happens by the way. Like I met with this person a year ago. I'm like, I know, and they call back in. They were looking for somebody, and this guy just asked them about an annuity, and lo and behold, they had three hundred and twenty grand sitting there. Yeah. That you never asked about. Yeah. And yes, we moved it. Um, yeah. So uh, that that would be my best advice. And, and look at those Hall of Fame producers. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, with the exception of maybe one. All right. There's always an exception on the bell curve, with the exception of maybe one, they wrote annuities. When Wetmore wrote his four hundred thousand, had annuities. Amy, number mm -hmm. one uh, issuing agent in the company, she writes annuities. Matt Smith, a number one a producer. Wayne, Wayne Carr. Wayne Carr writes annuities. Down the line, mm -hmm. you're 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 about ninety percent of them are going to write annuities. Well, and think about what Matt did. Matt. On life and annuities was seven hundred and some odd thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the other thing. You're, you're approaching take, a million well, dollars. You take you like yeah. Millie, Jonathan, some of these other. I mean, because they're you know, yep. four, Ivan, and I think even they're like kind of like, look, I found this. Ivan could turn around and issue eight hundred grand. Yeah. Hitting four or five hundred grand on life side, grab another three hundred grand on annuity side, yep. and he would not be upset about that money. No. And taking your advice, translating it a little bit, your new agent. Or an agent that's not writing them. Ivan's mm -hmm. a good example. I don't see it. And if I'm off, I'm off, I'm off. But, you know, mm -hmm. you're busy. I get it. You got to get that. I saw a Facebook post. Got my car hit, dented, went and wrote the policy. Mm -hmm. I'm on to the next policy. I love that. I know you love that. That's mm -hmm. the attitude you have to have. But you can slow down a little bit, make sure you're doing the financial inventory, and ask the question. Hey, Sean, do you consider yourself a saver and investor? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean? Well, if the market goes down 10%, are you, are you willing to have your investment right. or your retirement go down? And we can use some parallels. You know, the Tom Hagner one, you know, to mention him, Social Security. Sean, would you be comfortable if your Social Security check varied? It changed every month based on the market did? Heck no. I wouldn't want that. And another one on the financial inventory that we don't even think about, the financial inventory has been updated twice now, is it asked you of long-term care. Now, we don't sell long-term mm -hmm. care. That's, that is a rat race, right? Mm -hmm. But when they don't have long-term care, which 90-something percent are not, you say, we, we have some solutions that can solve mm -hmm. that. You know, so just get out right. there, slow down, and, and, and you, you're jumping over a lot of money if you're not no asking that question. And, and, and it's a lot of money, and it's also a lot of heartache you can save somebody. Yeah. If you yeah. leave a family who is truly a saver, you didn't ask them, and then their portfolio goes down 10, yeah. 12, 15%. They panic, don't know what to do, leave it in there. You take somebody who's got 180 grand and needs every penny of it. Yeah. Yep. And some they wake up one day and it's got it's it's down to 110 and they've accounted for every dollar. And they have to take out 10 more? Correct. You, 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 mm -hmm. you, you, you let them down. Yeah, you did. That's a good you point. Know? So our job is to protect them. So yeah. we gotta yeah. go out and protect them. I'm gonna finish with this. Um, Safe Money Smart. You can follow it on Twitter, uh, Facebook, or even LinkedIn. Uh, it's something that I do to make sure everything that I'm reading. Things that I'm getting grasping, saying, okay, whether I'm learning it through studying or seeing it in the news, it, it, it helps because it gives you information that you can then funnel to your clients and use in the home. I'll give you an example. The market, we had this big, big bull run. The market's gone up since 2009. 2018, it, it kind of leveled out. December was terrible. Everybody freaked out. But do this. There's, there's a, a, a post on Safe Money Smart. Look it up. Where I showed the market going up. And everybody's getting kind of numb and comfortable, mm -hmm. right? Well, why should I change? You know, I've been around for the last decade. My money's gone up. But then it shows a snapshot of one year. And, Sean, it's done mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. It's level with a dip. Mm -hmm. So w what is more telling? Recent history, the trends that are coming up, mm -hmm. or the nine years of the longest bull run in history? Right. Yeah, exactly. So these are just tidbits you can use. Sean, thank you so much. You appreciate you flying over here. Yeah, I absolutely. appreciate it's my first time on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. <laughs> oh, you did great, yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a good day.